Hello everyone, it's Krish here back. Thank you very much for all the feedback and comments and also we are hitting 5000 subscribers limit. So thank you very much for being with me and as a gift, I'm going to give you three videos in a row, right? So the moment uh, we hit the 5000 subscribers, I'm going to release the first video and from there, I'm going to give three videos in a row as a gift. And also, I'm going to start a new course, which is uh, not microservices, but also parallelly a uh, new course regarding the dockers and the DevOps and all, right? So that's my gift for you for being with me for this long time. Okay, in last video, uh, we discussed how we can do the service chaining, right? But we uh, did one thing which is not suitable for practically uh, deploying to the production, which is we hard coded the URL. Right. So what we really need is that URL come from discovery service. To do that, we need to know what the discovery service and how that works. Today, we are going to do that. So when it comes to discovery, we can use, uh, there are multiple uh, uh, frameworks, libraries out there. So for this one, I'm going to use Eureka, uh, Netflix Eureka. So you can use a console and you can use any, anything uh, what you want. But here's, the, here's the, uh, the responsibility of the discovery service. Okay, so uh, when you deploy multiple services, right? So let's say you have five services in your um, service uh, cloud, right? If you get the customer service, you need more traffic. So you create more instances from the customer service. It's the same service, but more instances. So now when you create more instances, especially when you uh, deal with the dockers, so each instance get its own IP address. So now for the consumer, you give one IP address. So when the consumer hit that one IP address, so there, but there are five instances for that customer service, right? So let's say something like this, you have API gateway. So you hit that API gateway and say, I want to go to customer service. So now there are five customer services running, right? So API gateway does not know or neither the, your consumer does not know which IP address to be called. So that's why the discovery service come in handy. So how the discovery service works, so each service behind the discovery service, when they start up, so they talk to discovery service and tell, hey, my name is this and my IP address is this, right? So let's get the customer service as example. So customer service in the startup, it says, hey, my name is customer service. Uh, my IP address 192.168.1.1 or like 10.80.0.81.1 or something like that, right? So let's say 10.0.81.1. So now we spawn other customer service that talk to discovery service and say, hey, my name is customer service, my IP address 10.0.81.2. We spawn now new one. It tell customer service, hey, it tell to discover service, hey, my name is customer service, my IP address is 10.0.81.3. So now there are three services running, three IP addresses for the customer service. So when the custom consumer asks, hey, I want to go to customer service. So the discovery, the API gateway talk to discovery service and ask, hey, who is the customer service I need to call? So then discovery service pass the uh, relevant IP address from one of uh, those three to the API gateway and API gateway invoke the service, right? So that is the task of the discovery service. So how the discovery service knows whether the service is up and running. So each uh, 30 seconds, you can configure, uh, talk to the particular service and see whether its service is up and running, right? So in the, uh, the future video, we are going to discuss um, how we can customize this. For example, just because of service up and running, that doesn't mean we should uh, use that service, right? Probably the database which use that service is heavily loaded and uh, like it performance, like it, it uh, response time may be uh, higher than the expected. So in that case, we need, we should not send the traffic to that service. In future videos, we can see how we can customize that. For, for the today video, if the service is just running, we consider we should pass the traffic to that service. Okay. So now, for this one, we need to create customer, uh, we need to create a service discovery mechanism. In this video, to make it a little simple, I'm not going to use the API gateway, but I'm going to directly use the uh, service discovery tool, right? So for this one, I'm going to use Netflix Eureka, right? 
So um, if you see here, you can see I have used uh, last three services what we use. If you don't remember that, I think you can go back to that uh, video and see what we have done over there. As a recap, we created a vehicle service and we did a customer service and also we created a rent service, right? So what we did is we invoked rent service and tell I need to get information about the rent ID one. So then rent, rent service talk to uh, customer service rent service take the rent information and send the customer ID to the customer service and get the customer information and the vehicle service uh, vehicle ID pass to the vehicle service and get the vehicle information right that's what we did right for today uh, I'm going to create um, for today I'm going to create a new project uh, for my discovery right you know how to get a project now For here, I'm going to use Eureka server, right? So this one, that is the only dependency I need. Uh, for the version, I prefer to use version 2.1.1 uh, because that is the version we use for the services. So I'm going to uh, use the same service here. And now I can see uh, the my uh, discovery service. Okay, and new window, okay. So, um, you can see here now discovery service is created so all the dependencies uh, downloaded so i'm going to use this uh, i'm going to open the discovery service i'm going to use the discovery service with the same uh, service stack i have so that would be easy okay so now we have our discovery service right um so you can see here it just add the one dependency which is the eureka server right so if you start this right now, uh, this discovery service, obviously this is going to fail. But let me to show you why it is failing, right? Yeah, as we expected, it failed. The reason is that the discovery service now uh, it going to it knows I'm a discovery service and it's going to register discovery service on its own right doesn't make any sense right why the discovery service has to register its own but that's how it works so to avoid that what i'm going to do is i go back here so usually i'm going to change this to a uh, yaml i don't like it's, it's a personal preference if you prefer with the uh, property file you can go with that but since i prefer with the yaml i'm going to uh, use the yaml right so uh, register with eureka I'm going to set as a false. Hey, you don't go and register with the Eureka, right? And also, uh, I'm going to set the fetch registry equal to false because since this is the registry, uh, I don't expect this to uh, download and the cache registry its own, right? Because this is the registry. And um, so now it's fine. So now I'm going to uh, run again. Okay, good. So now uh, we don't have any errors. So one more thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to go here and tell this is enable Eureka server, right? So enable Eureka server. I'm going to add that annotation. So to uh, tell this is a Eureka server, okay? So now I'm going to run this. Okay, it's, it's running now. So I'm going to use uh, localhost 8080. So now you can see the discovery service is running, right? So, but uh, usually we don't run the discovery service on 8080 because that's the default port one is uh, uh, 8761. And also you can see here, so there are a couple of uh, parameters which to tell what is the environment and what the data center. So right now, since we didn't configure, it still use a test and default, uh, we, can, we can set this, okay? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and set the server dot port to uh, eighty seven sixty one. So that's the standard port uh, usually we use for this. And for here, I'm going to use um, data center is 
Colombo, Sri Lanka and um, environment is not the instance environment it's just environment so uh, if you're deploying this in AWS cloud you can use this data center information to fetch the uh, the real data center which is deployed right I'm not going to talk it here so I'm going to use this as a production All right so now I change the port to 8761 and I use the data center as a production. Okay, so now if you go back here, so 8080 won't work, right? So 8761, so that is my, uh, the port I have given. So you can see the environment and uh, data center has changed to like the whatever the parameters we have given and uh, it says up. It's cool, right? So now it says the um, no services are available because still these services don't have clients, right? So now what we need to do is we need to configure uh, our uh, services to register with the Eureka, right? So now if you go back to our previous explanation, uh, now we have a discovery service, we have a client separately. So now still client doesn't know who is the discovery service. Now we need to configure the clients to discovery service. So then what happens is when the client start up, it talk to discovery, it send a message to discovery service, hey discovery, my name is this and I'm running on the this IP address, right? So let's see how we can do that. So if you go back to our discovery service, you can see here we uh, created uh, this one, right? So this um, dependency. So this is the Eureka server for the clients, we need to add uh, Eureka client, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and add not the Eureka server but Eureka client, right? So I'm going to use Eureka client. I don't need the specific version here because it's come automatically. And also I need to use uh, this one, right? It's cloud, okay? So I'm going to copy this here and also I need to copy this property because this is the property which carried the uh, cloud version okay so i need to go back here and add this into the property section right i did three things one i um, copied uh, i added spring uh, sorry i added eureka uh, client dependency the, you know the eureka server i just copied that and changes the client and because i was lazy and then i added the, the cloud dependency the asset dependency management and also I copied this um, property file name to give you the dependence, uh, the cloud version, right? So you can see, see here it's parameterized. Okay, so now this one is ready. But we need to keep in mind one very important thing, right? So right now we have application.yaml file to configure our all the configurations. But since we are in the discovery mode, since this is a client for a discovery service, there are certain parameters has to set even before the application.yaml being processed, right? So, so what we need to do is we can introduce a new file called bootstrap.yaml, okay? So I'm going to create a file bootstrap.yaml, right? So here, so this file is uh, processing even before the application YAML file process. So therefore, we can set the configuration which need by the application.yaml file here. For example, a service name, right? For example, uh, service name, spring application name, right? So my application name is customer, right? So I can remove this from uh, here Right, we don't need this from here now, okay? Because I need that before even uh, application YAML file process. And if you uh, if you're not using your discovery service default parameters, like for example, I use the default port 80, uh, 8761 and as a default uh, service, right? Uh, and also in the default server, right? Which is a local host. So I don't need to create. I don't need to specifically tell the customer service where my discovery service is because it uh, when when you have when this uh, customer service see the dependency it automatically go and check the default location default zone which is a local host and 8761 but 
if you configure if your uh, eureka service is from different location different ip address different port then you can set uh, defaults on here as a url right so in that case it will take that url uh, to work right i'm not setting that because this is uh, i don't need to set it okay because i'm using default one okay so now um, so i'm going to use server dot port as zero here right why i'm doing this i can i can set a default port here right but uh, why i need to why i should not do that because when when you implement when you uh, deploy multiple instances from the same service those those instances you cannot open from the same ports if you go for docker yeah you can do it but as a good practice you can set it in a zero then what it what happens is every time it runs it take up uh, this port randomly based on the availability right so it is not a fixed hard coded port one way this can enforce the security because no one knows uh, which port this service is running unless you go through a discovery service right so it's kind of a security feature as well but um, it's more than the security feature you can set this to give the dynamic port right so now remember in here we added two properties right so what these two uh, properties did is to set it to false right so uh, one is register with eureka and fetch registry so i need to set both of these properties i need to set both these properties uh, to true right so i need to set both these properties to true why because this is a eureka client so need to register on the eureka server right so that is what the register with eureka tells so now fetch registry mean this is a client so download the register so you don't need to go back to every time to uh, go with the eureka server to what other services and so on and so forth right now again so now it says register with the eureka but we don't tell where the eureka is we don't have to because our eureka server run on the local host and on the default port but in case if it's different there is a parameter called instance dot um, url service url dot default zone you can configure uh, your property here i'm not exactly sure about the the name of the property but uh, i'm pretty sure it's a default zone so you can you can google it and find it okay right so now uh, i configured the properties now only thing i have to do is i go back here i should go here and tell this is eureka client right enable okay i forgot to um, reload the pom file so let's go back here even reimport okay so come back here enable uh, eureka client right so add that property right so now uh, let's start the customer service okay cool so you can see the status is 204 that means it's registered so you go back here and you refresh now you can see the customer service run on here so since we didn't give uh, the particular port you can see here is the the bottom left corner the, this run on a port 50310 right that's a dynamic port is taken from here so now there's a one more problem we face right so for example if you get this one so you can see uh, this is a host name and the customer zero right so if you manage to run one more instance from here so that you go back in the customer service i'm going to say hey no not on a single instance right so i'm going to run one more instance from the customer service right so you can see here now there are two customer services are running right so one here another one here okay so okay so both is running now so if i go back here and if i refresh so you can see still it does not tell you the two instances are running right because the reason is here we use the same name for both uh, services both instances to register with the eureka right so that's why it's override one so now what happens is other 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 uh, story of this if i stop one customer service technically now one is running one is stopped so you can see there's one customer service is running right so if you come and refresh here you can see no instance available right so it does not know whether the second instance is updated here or not so for that what we can do is in the customer service um, this file 
we can give uh, a name dynamic name to the instance to get registered so what we can do is here you can say instance uh, in society, right? For this one, I can use um, Spring dot application service name hyphen some random number, right? So random dot int. Okay. So this one. So now, uh, what I'm telling here. So for also, you can say uh, if you want a host name, right? So you can say local host. Right. So what I'm doing here, I'm giving a dynamic ID for each uh, instance I'm running. Right. So I'm going to stop uh, the new, the already running customer service as well. Right. So now no customer service are run. Oops. Uh, so we'll see again. Right. So now no, uh, nothing is running. So I'm going to run the discovery service again. So uh, now it's running. So no instance. It's a local host, right? So now, if I run one customer service, right? Okay. So go back here to your uh, discovery portal. You can see one is running. So now it is not like last time. It's a customer, some random number. So now I'm going to run one more instance from the customer service. Okay. So if you go back here, so you can see now two instances are running, right? I'm going to run one more instance. Now it will tell three instances are running. So now uh, you understand uh, the concept behind this, why we need to put the dynamic number because in order to uh, uniquely identify the each instance right so now you can see three instances are running all three up right so now i can stop one instance right if i stop one instance it won't go all the instances offline so now three running so now you can see two running right so this is how it work right now we understand uh, how that happened so now what i need to do is i need to uh, set this to all the services right um, so that's just pretty much for um, about the discovery service. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can replace this uh, the values, the UR, the service names and the service URL and the port from discovery service to our the last example which we have where we hard coded, right? So that video I'm going to release in like one or two days later from this video. So you can stay in touch and watch that video. So that way you can understand how fully uh, this picture works, right? So uh, make sure, keep in mind, I'm going to change the same configuration for all other services. I don't want to do that in front of you because uh, this is not a, you guys have some experience now and you know how things work, right? So thank you very much for watching this video and also make sure, make sure and make sure subscribe to the channel if you are not already and like this video and put a comment what you feel about this video and also share this video within your community if there are people who are interested in this type of videos. Till uh, we meet in the next video, stay safe, take care.